All right, it's planting day, my favorite day. So we're gonna start with our drainage layer. You want at least a couple inches. Now this isn't gonna be a extremely high humidity environment for a gargoyle gecko, so there won't be as much standing water in the bottom, but you still wanna have somewhere for the water to go. And this stuff also creates a nice little place for your springtails to breed. So once you have your drainage layer, which, you know, it can be kind of clay balls like these. Um, I don't know if you can see this other one. It has kind of the lava rock style. You know, the key is to be lightweight. You know, these things are going to be heavy enough already. You don't need to pile rocks in the bottom of them. But then you need a screen separator to keep the substrate from just going and then mixing and getting all gross and swampy. Um, you can get a uh, weed block or you can get screens made for reptiles, like BioDrain. Um, I wouldn't use anything metal, because that's going to rust over time. You want something fabric or fiberglass, um, and something that's going to last a while. You don't want it to uh, degrade and disappear and let all your soil mix into your drainage layer. Alright, so we got our nice screen down and ready to put in some substrate. You can go with a pre-mixed jungle substrate. Um, this is one from Any Herp that I like a lot. You can also make your own. Um, there's plenty of recipes online. And the only thing I'd stay away from is anything that's really soil heavy. Um, that's not really what you want. This is gonna be, you know, not as humid as a dart frog vivarium, but pretty humid and your substrate's going to break down. So if you start with something like soil that's already pretty much broken down, it's going to get really compressed and saturated fast. Um, it's not great for long-term health. So if you're going to do a mix, make sure you look up a good one that has a lot of organic components, some larger chunks, um, stuff that'll provide kind of breathing for the plant roots and let your custodians crawl through it. Um, you don't want to end up with a bunch of compacted mud. So, give me a second here. I'm going to fill this up, and then will come the fun part of planting. Alright, so I filled in the bottom here. I have a little bit more substrate reserve just to kind of fill in once I get the plants positioned where I want them. Um, and I've put back our magnetic planter ledge. And the idea is I'll build up the substrate around it a little. But what you want to think about when you have animals is what plants are going to do well with them. That means not putting anything poisonous or dangerous in other ways like sharp or has a caustic sap, that sort of thing. Um, but it also means putting in plants that can actually stand up to your animals. So if you have little dart frogs, you know, you can put in pretty much anything. They're not going to wreck it. Uh, you have a gargoyle gecko with claws that likes to kind of fling itself around <laughs> on all the plants. You're going to need some sturdier plants. Um, I don't know if you can see here. This is uh, my crested gecko vivarium. And you'll notice I have a Sansevieria, I have pothos, some air plants. There is very little delicate in here. And the delicate things I did have were pretty much killed. Oh, and I have a Hoya that's debatable condition right now. <laughs> she uh, keeps digging it up, trying to lay eggs in its planter. But these plants have done very well, but they're also very forgiving. Um, she can break them, she can sit on them, she can bend them over, they kind of spring back up. Um, so that's what you need to think about. Um, a lot of vivarium places have plant packs now, and they'll actually design them around your animals. So if you're not a plant expert, I'd highly recommend that. Um, they will pick out things that are, you know, first of all, safe, and also good for the species you're going to be housing. Um, and that's what I did. I had uh, any herp kind of pick out a, they call it a heavy duty plant pack, which is plants that will hopefully stand up to geckos. Um, but you need to think about that. And then once you have your plant selected, you want to look up, you know, how big are they going to get? How do they like to grow? Do they like to grow up? Are they kind of viney trailers that like to grow down? And how much light do they need? I mean, I know it's not, you don't want to really start your own garden here, but you do need to think a little about what the plants need. Because if you, for example, plant something that's a shade lover way at the top where it's bright and dry, it's not going to do very well and you'll just end up with sad, dead plants. 
So I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plants I have and I'm going to kind of position them where I want them and then I'll show you and explain why I've chosen different locations. Alright, so I have a ridiculous number of plants here. I fully expect some of these are going to kick the bucket on me. I am fair to middling as far as plant care, but I'm going to be optimistic. So. In this corner here up front, this is a mahogany fern. Um, this is going to be the tallest plant in the enclosure if it survives. It can get two to three feet tall. So this is really kind of the focal point. And I've put it here out of the way. One, because it doesn't really like bright direct sunlight, but also because I don't want it to take over and suffocate all the tiny plants. So that's why that one's there. In the back here is going to be the golden pothos wedged in a corner. I hate them because they take over the world if given the chance. But it's also my backup plant for when I kill all the more delicate plants because I can't kill pothos just like I can't kill Sansephiria. This is a begonia species, begonia foliosa. Um, this can be a trailing plant, but I have too many of those, so we're going to see if it'll creep along here up front. Kind of low to medium light is okay for it. Right here, we have an interesting thing, a spike moss. It's not really a moss, but it looks like moss, and it needs humidity. So I'm going to put it down here, and this is going to be kind of a wetter area for it. Um, it may even spread onto this log, which would be nice. Uh, you may remember this log from my staging. It's uh, basically a ground hide. It's a cork tube. I also have some more traditional moss that they sent. I have been horrible at keeping moss alive, but I'm going to put it on top here and see if it can survive. Up here is kind of a new plant for me. This is called a Dischidia. The exact species Dischidia russifolia. Uh, it's kind of a viney trailer and it apparently can be wall mounted. So I'm going to mount this actually in this little crook here with some sphagnum moss. Um, if it grows it'll be nice and kind of trail down. Up here this is a earth star also known as Cryptanthus. And this is also mountable, so I'm going to mount this in sphagnum moss in this little space here. Needs lots of bright light, so that's why it's up top here. Right in this planter, I'm going to put our Hoya. This is Hoya carnosa, the variegated variety. This is also a downward trailer, so it'll be happy if it starts high and gets to kind of spread. This is a philodendron species. Um, the variety is called Brazil. It's kind of interesting. It's really variegated right now. I don't know if it'll stay that way, but it also likes to grow down. So I'm going to put that in the wall planter and it'll have room to kind of spread out. Back here is a lemon button fern, which they kind of like lower light and humidity. So I'm going to plant him back there in the crook. Pilea species, and this is also kind of a ground creeper. It doesn't require a ton of light, so I'm going to plant this over here and let this kind of have this little area. So before I get started, I'm just going to add a few amendments. This is a very weak organic fertilizer. It's non-burning, it's safe to plant with. Um, to be careful with fertilizers, some are not good for newly planted plants, so go with something organic and not chemical and check to make sure it's okay as a, a starter fertilizer for fresh plantings. And I'm going to use this at half strength and mix it in pretty well here. You know, whatever you're using, just read the label and do about half strength. Thing I'm going to add is a bio booster. Because I'm starting with kind of clean substrate here, 
and not actually collecting, it will be lacking a lot of the fungi and bacteria that naturally help soil break down waste and be healthy for plants. So a couple of companies have started putting this out. In the past, I've used organic compost starter, but buying something specifically made for vivariums uh, is that little extra guarantee that everything in there is safe for animals. But And always follow the instructions and don't overdo it. Less is more sometimes. Alright, so I'm going to mix this up really good. And we can start planning. guys up here wrapped up in moist sphagnum moss just kind of anchored them everybody else I kind of planted where I had laid them out also there's this moss came with my order I didn't really need any and I really don't expect this one up here to survive but I felt bad just throwing it out so a little bit of moss and I gave everything a very good watering and very good misting. I don't know if you can see, I have like a little bit of water, under an inch, now standing in the bottom. And all this is nice and damp. So this really has to sit for at least a month. I mean, ideally you'd leave it a couple months. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One, the plants all need to put down roots and start growing and become a little more secure. If I put my gecko in here right now, she would trash everything and rip them all apart. So you want your plants to be a little well rooted when you put your animal in, especially with geckos. And the other reason is cycling. So usually when you do a bioactive setup, there's an initial mold bloom that happens and you want time for that to get under control. And to do that, you need your custodians. So I'm gonna start this one out with springtails and dwarf isopods, which are pretty standard. Um, on my other habitat, oh, hello Luna. What's up? Can I say hello? You gonna freak on me? Hi. I know, I'm invading your home. And my other one, you can see these guys. These are much larger isopods. And this tank is basically overrun with them. Yeah, I can hardly move anything without finding at least a few running around in here. And there she goes. Bye. I have two cultures I'm gonna add. These are dwarf purple isopods. See, I got lots in there. And luckily they're on jungle bedding, so I will just dump them right in. My other culture is springtails. Look at these guys. So these are the good guys. They eat waste, they eat mold, and that's how the bioactive enclosures work. And their waste eventually gets broken down by bacteria and fungi, which is why you saw me kind of inoculate the substrate. So custodians have been dumped in. There's one final touch, a bit of leaf litter. So this is just live oak. I like oaks. Um, I've used some magnolia also, but they don't tend to break down very well, so. I'm just going to lay a thin layer of this around all my plants and that'll give the isopods something to eat and provide hiding spots. 
Alrighty, we've reached the end of planting day. So basically, for at least a month, you want to keep everything well watered, probably more so than you would do once your gecko was in here. Um, again, you should look into your plants and see what kind of watering schedule they need. Some do need to dry out a little, but when they're acclimating, you just want to do a little more often. Um, especially for stuff that requires high humidity, like moss. And I'll probably throw in some food for the custodians, because there isn't a gecko in here. Um, I like kind of rapashi morning wood or bug burger. That's always pretty good. And only time will tell. I mean, you have to get some dye off on your plants. But hopefully then you see them starting to put out new growth. So in a month I should know which of these I planted well and which ones probably aren't going to survive. So today was the Mass Reptile Expo. And I got myself a little treat. These are orange isopods. Pretty cool looking. So I'm going to add these to the custodian colony inside our new tank.